David said. I'm, uh, my name is Raymond uh, Sorosh. Uh, I uh, work at the NTNU University Museum at Trondheim. It's one of the regional archaeological museums in Norway. Uh, and uh, in the last two years, I have been participating in a project uh, document doc where we have uh, done photogrammetry on uh, a, a site where we painted rock art. I will talk a little bit, bit about that now. Um, <clears throat> this site uh, where we have done uh, is at uh, Hundhammer. Uh, painted rock art sites are known in various locations in Norway. Uh, we have painted cave art uh, and we also have these exposed rock art sites uh, in both coastal and inland regions. Uh, <clears throat> one of the more famous sites in the middle part of Norway is called Huynamer. Uh, uh, it's located at uh, the Tingvoll County in Møre og Romstad region, central part of Norway. The rock art at Hunamed <coughs> is uh, situated in a dramatic landscape with several steep cliffs uh, and rock shelters above the Tingvoll fjord. Around 30 panels with painted rock art are known in these two areas. Uh, known as Hunamernese and Hinna, both known as Hunamer. Uh, the panels are located uh, on several levels from 10 to 30 meter, meters above sea level. Uh, considering shoreline displacement uh, in this area, the maximum age for the site, uh, sites is placed between 3000 and 8000 BP. Uh, according to each panel's height. Uh, however, the, the variations in height and motif variations indicates that there are no absolute correlation between each panel's height uh, and the age of the actual panel. Um, so a little bit history on this site. Um, in the 1990s, alarming reports were made considering, considering the state of preservation for several rock art sites across Norway. Among these were Hunamer. Eventually, this resulted in the establishing of the National Rock Art Project, deriving from the National Cultural Heritage Management, Riksantikvarn, <coughs> and uh, working with uh, the regional museums and the uh, Norwegian Institute for Cultural Heritage and several partners. Um, a central part of the project was documentation and preservation work. <clears throat> in this project, Hunamer was subjected to several investigations in the following years. Uh, surveys showed that several of the sites were badly damaged from both human interac interaction and especially through natural processes such as frost weathering, descaling on the, of the surfaces and biological activity. In these pictures, uh, which we see here, uh, we can see a, damaged, uh, a badly damaged cross-shaped uh, painting. Um, uh, the problem is descaling of the natural surface patina, pat, patina of the rock due to a combination of biological activity and frost weathering. The picture on the left um, oh, no. oh, it's to point. Okay, picture on the left uh, and right is recorded with an interval of 10 years. And as we can see in the picture of the, the right, that's most recent, several pieces has fallen off. And it's still continuing. Um, several attempts have been made to stop these natural processes at Huname. The main attempt has been to find a way to consolidate the rock surface through stone conservation techniques. 
several attempts has been made without intervening with actual rock arch, without finding an adequate method. Uh, there's even been one unauthorized attempt uh, made with epoxy glue, which you can see here. Uh, this example, uh, a consolidation test was performed directly on the pigments of the cross, which I saw you earlier. Uh, uh, and actually the test has lived been, here is before and that's a little bit later and that's last year uh, the conservation test has led to more cracking and descaling of this uh, petroglyph um, in conclusion it is probable that there is not, uh, we are not able to develop methods that stop these natural uh, degradations of these sites. We must accept that some sites will be lost in the near future. 50 years, 100 years, we don't know. A consequence of this develop de development is that we now have to focus on developing documentation strategies that give us the best possible record of the rock's art thus making it possible to preserve the sites in, arch in, in an archive form for future generations and research. Oh, that's too, too far. Okay, so, there we go. The aim of our project. Uh, considering the above mentioned factors, a project has been established at the Antanu University Museum to develop a, methodolo a method for making a full three-dimensional documentation of several of these sites at Hunamir. The aim is to make complete three-dimensional models of the site, which incorporates both the three-dimensional structure of the site and pres preserves information about the color pigment. In addition, we would like to explore if it's possible to preserve such information for, f for future generations using established archival infrastructures at the Norwegian Regional Archaeological Museums. Uh, my aim doing this project was to apply a methodology that would make it possible to preserve both 3D information and color pigmented information from the painted panels. So field work was carried out in 2014 on two panels at Hunamir. Uh, we were also there last year, but uh, I will talk about the 2014 season. Uh, to reach our aims, I applied the following methods, shown in simplified form in this figure. Uh, overlapping photos with recording using a Sony uh, QX100 digital camera. Uh, following the usual recording uh, procedures for digital photogrammetry. Uh, to reach all areas of the subjected panels, the camera was su supported on a 7 meter lightweight carbon fiber pole uh, and remotely controlled using an iPhone. <clears throat> for obtaining coordinate systems for georeferencing and optim optimizing image uh, alignment later, several ground control marks on the edge of the panels was recorded using a total station. Uh, image and coordinates were processed in Photoscan, uh, producing high resolution surface models. These models was first textured, textured from the original photos in Photoscan. Uh, later, uh, we exported the textures from Photoscan for further manipulation. And uh, we decided to use a program, uh, an, uh, an application called DStretch, which is a uh, plugin for uh, ImageJ, which is an open source uh, image uh, processing software. Uh, DStretch is a tool for rock art research which enhances images of pictographs. Uh, DStretch works by using decorrelation stretching techniques, which is an uh, um, image technique to enhance subtle color differences in a picture. Uh, it uh, has been developed for remote sensing from satellite images originally. Uh, these threads support several different color spaces. 
So you can, it uh, works with color spaces that uh, you're not usually uh, use in uh, programs like Photoshop. Afterward, afterwards, we used these manipulated textures to retexturize the 3D models using Photoscan. Okay. <clears throat> so, field work was carried out 2014 September. The first panel we visited was a, is a small rock, rock shelter with several deer geometric patterns and three carved boat figures. Using the set equipment, we re recorded overlapping photographs along with eight reference marks. The processed image resulted in a high resolution model with around uh, 170 points per square centimeters. Um, this example is a snapshot of the finished model with the original texture from the original photographs. <clears throat> Using D-Stretch, we were able to manipulate the exported texture and import it back to retexturize in Photoscan. This example shows a snapshot of the finished model with manipulated textures using uh, color space LXX in D-Stretch. Comparing with the unman unmanipulated uh, model, the pigments are now much more visible and shows weak and fainted, fainted pictograms, which could not be observed on original unmanipulated. Or original model. Um, comparing with earlier trace tracings from these sites from 2000 in the middle and on the top is a tracing from, from 1939 made by Götto and Messing. Uh, <coughs> we have areas um, uh, mo so it shows that most elements that has been traced is visible on the man manipulated model. Uh, we also have areas on the right hand side of the panel which contains pictograms of our model which are not present in the 2000 middle uh, tracings. Uh, um, these, some of these uh, pigments are visible at Yesings, the top tracing, which suggests pigments have faded, but is still present when using color manipulation. The so next site we visited. Uh, panel 3 is a vertical exposed cliff with four fish figures, probably salmon. The site was recorded in the same uh, manner as uh, the previous site, uh, and resulted in a very similar model in both quality and accuracy. In this picture, we see a snapshot of the texturized model using original colors. And we see the fish figures in the lower part. I can't see them. What? <laughs> we do not see any other rock art on the panel. So this is after manipulation. This example shows a snapshot of the finished model with manipulated texture using color space LXX in D-Stretch. By compar comparison, in, in the model with manipulated <coughs> colors in D-Stretch, several vertical lines with red pigments is visible. Uh, also, the fish figure stands out much clearer. We do not know, uh, we do not know what these vertical lines represent. One possibility is that they are, may represent fishing lines. We do not know. Um, comparing with a 2012 tra tracing, we see the same degree of details. However, in addition, we see the mentioned vertical lines. This prob probably indicates uh, that pigments have faded over the years. Uh, Fortunately, it was we were able to reproduce these faded lines using D stretch. Okay. Uh, for both sites, we had good results producing high resolution models of both panels and rock surfaces. The alternative to using Photoscan would be other 3D scanning methods, most probably laser scanning. 
Several factors should be observed when choosing the preferred methods for these type of documentations. First of all, photogrammetry using digital camera and, and photo scan is very cost efficient, efficient and relatively straightforward. Laser scanning equipment costs several times more and represents a high investment costs for the museums. In addition, photogrammetry through photoscan preserves color information from documented surfaces. This process is simultaneous with the 3D generating process. The test carried out at Hunamid shows that it's possible to use this information from Photoscan to enhance pigment variations in rock art panels. Using D-Stretch, it was possible to enhance pigment variations not visible to the naked eye. By re-importing these manipulated textures, it was possible to uh, evaluate the whole panel in 3D with all visual pigments at hand. Uh, when considering traditional tracing, the proposed process is a lot more efficient in both accuracy and time spent on site. Tracing is dependent on what we can observe by the naked eye, and one is uh, dependent on several factors, especially weather. The process also involves cutting large sheets of foil, scanning them, downscaling and retracing. This can be time consuming. In addition, the end result is a flat 2D representation of a 3D surface. Digital photogrammetry and color manipulation was much less time consuming and require, required fewer steps to reach the end result. Uh, in addition, the accuracy is much greater. The panel 3D information is preserved and weak and visible pigments is included, thus representing a total documentation of the panel. <coughs> so, uh, I will try to start summoning up. Uh, Three-dimensional documentation has been seen as a method to close the gap between in situ preservation and ex situ preservation through archives. However, if the results of these methods is to be considered a long-term ex situ preservation of the panels, it is important to consider archival file formats and the available long-term digital ar archival infrastructure. infrastructure. <clears throat> the Norwegian Regional Archaeological Museums have a responsibility to preserve ex situ information from archaeological sites in the regions. The current national databases run by these museums have the framework to store basic archival file, file formats, PDF, TIFFs, and so on. Um, the file format of 3D models cannot be stored within this, this framework. Also, we do not know if these formats will be supported in the future. There is no current international standard for storing 3D information. Uh, at the moment, our solution is to archive the original digital photos together with georeference information and processing, and processing met metadata. This will make it possible to rerun the same process in the future recreating the same model. However, I think this is, it is important to consider developing archival standards for preserving readily available three-dimensional in information. To close the gap between in situ and ex situ preservation, we should be able to store finished model, models which can be readily opened by, for viewing by any person interested without the technical knowledge to to process the raw material. I think I will stop there. Mm -hmm. yeah.